Good evening, everyone. Welcome one more time to 1st of June. We're here in the morning to talk about the number six and the number for sunshine at 12 o'clock, the sun shines. And Gabriel visited Mary in the sixth month and was told Elizabeth was already six months old pregnant. She went to see Elizabeth as soon as she got there, the baby in her lip, lips and spoke in tongues. What are we saying? In this sixth month, God wants us to see new things. And what you see determines what happens. God speaks to his children through pictures and patterns. Man's eyes are for sight. Ears to hear. Feet to possess our territory. Man has to use his tongue to declare what he sees and hears. If you see anything revealed by God, even if you don't understand it, brethren, write it down. That's how God starts. Let me take the first case in Genesis 13, 40 to 18. Lot left Abraham and chose the better side of the land. Abraham went on that side. Now, after Lot left Abraham, God told Abraham, Look now up the eyes. Lift now up the eyes and see from the place where thou art northward, southward, eastward, and westward. These are the four major these are the four major geographical regions in the earth. And Abraham, as he looked, God showed him some land. And God expected him to walk into that land and take possession of it. You cannot see something and keep quiet. If you see it, you don't understand it, write it down. It's a vision for tomorrow. Whatever God shows you today is a vision for tomorrow. Please, Abraham, walk with his own. And actually go to a place where God wanted to possess the land. And God told him, arise, walk through the land in the land of feet and the breadth of feet. And God said, all the land which thou seest shall be for thee. God promised our forefathers land, not money. And whatever land they saw, they possessed. What are the lessons to learn from here today? One, there's what we call man's sight. Man's sight of what? If man doesn't do his own, however God is ready, God will not do his own. If man does his own, then God does his own. So there's a man was side, man was side, man was side. Man was side. And there's a God was side. It, it's our duty to speak and prophesy the word of God and let go out. But if we see something and keep quiet, don't expect God to move. Man has to do his part before God does his part. No side can be operated in isolation. You do your own and you agree with God and God does his own and great feet are attainable. As an obedient servant like Abraham, I don't know what God has shown you. Take steps to actualize it. What do you need? Where do you need to visualize it? What amount is required? Find out what you need so that as you begin to pray, God shows you more things as to what to do to accomplish that vision. Joseph dreamt a dream and God showed him and he achieved it. I don't know what God is showing you this month. I also prophesy you achieve your goal in Jesus' name. Note one thing. If Abraham has seen it, he didn't walk through the length and breadth of it, he can't enter it. Whether you are Archbishop, Pope, man, woman, engineer, professor, whoever you are, if God has shown you any vision, write it down and begin to find out from God, what do I do to actualize it? Not taking steps is a sign of you don't believe in the word of God. Not taking steps is also a sign that you don't know God's timing and season. Because life is prime and time. And if you miss your timing, you lose command. I've always said that. Once you lose your command, the opportunity is gone forever. Please, I prophesy, whatever God has shown you this month or he has shown you earlier in the year, begin to walk towards it. Abraham walked towards the land and possessed it. You also have to walk towards that place and begin to find out money you need, people you need, assets of ground, and things that can be 
collated to make the vision work. You will not lose your time in Jesus' name. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8. It's time for everything. What is somebody of what I said now? One, you see it first. Shut up me. You see it first. Two, you walk through the land. Number three, you declare the counsel of God while in the land. Number four, you expect to eat the good of the land. Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, wherever God sent them to, they ate the fruit of the land. I also prophesy you are serving God this sixth month as the sun of righteousness shine upon your forehead. You will eat the good of the land in Jesus' name. Number five, out of what you get from that land, you serve God with your tithe and offering, help others, and be a kingdom addicted person, using your time and money to serve God and bring more souls to church. Case two, Abraham and the stars, Genesis 15, 1 to 6. God took Abraham out of, God took Abraham at, out at night when he had no child and he was complaining. Yes, I don't have a child. What do I do? God said, come outside. And he took him outside. And Genesis 15, 5 says, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look now towards heaven. And tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto, unto him, so shall thy seed be. None of us on earth with our eyes can see how many stars are in the sky. So there's no way Abraham could have counted it. But God wanted to show him as plenty as those stars are, that is how his children will be. God has kept speaking to our forefathers in pictures and plans. Expect him to do more this time. Something will be showing you about your life, about your family, about your work, and God will tell you what to do to expand that business. I don't know what God has been speaking to you since the beginning of the year, or for some years now. May you understand today and walk towards the vision as he shows you or he showed you some years ago. Thank God, Father Abraham believed and it was counted for him for righteousness. Genesis 15, 6b. I pray too, as Abraham got his soul, Isaac entered the promised land, Jacob went to stay with Laban, came back and occupied his land, Joseph occupied his land. You too will occupy that and show you. Money is the number one. God showed them land. From land, they got money. Remember, it is those who believe that there will be a performance. If you fold your hands, fold your life, it's your portion because you will never get it. God wants people to believe. Then you will move. Whatever God has shown you will come to pass one day. I saw a vision of peace. Sister. It was not that say I resigned. I had to work on it and pray about it. Almost 2009 in Kenya. Then I came to Nigeria. It has been in November. 11 months. Kept waiting and waiting for the due season. Don't give up. God has never failed his children. He won't start for you in Jesus' name. Case 3. Jacob and the ladder. He was going to Laban's place in the night. He saw a ladder from earth to heaven. Angels ascending and descending on it. And God was telling him, that's how his life will be. And Abraham, uh, Jacob didn't understand. How can ladder be climbing and ascending? Uh, Angel be climbing and ascending the ladder. But God spoke to him in Genesis 28, 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it unto thy seed. So God always give them and make sure that their seed inherit it. Like Abraham, God showed Isaac land. Now he's showing Jacob land. This was their major capital asset. When God is showing you something, do not throw it away. Write it down. The vision is for an appointed time. At the end, what will happen? He shall speak. At the end, he shall speak. So don't keep it that you don't know. Write it down. And be reversing it one day, God will tell you what you can do to actualize that dream. Joseph went through up and down, but he believed inside his heart that he was going to get a return and he got there. Don't throw your vision away because you don't understand it. 
Write it down and keep it somewhere where you can be revising it. The visions for an appointed time at the end, not at the, not at the middle, not even uh, at the, uh, uh, the quarter, at the end. So make up your mind that what we have been going to be telling you, you have been seeing. I don't know when you want to achieve it, but this month, something must be achieved towards that goal in Jesus' name. As you move from place to place, office to office, on a daily routine, coming to a church, open your ears from the church, from the devotions you read, from the lessons you learn from people, God can speak to you about that vision. Your future is bright. Nobody can truncate it in Jesus' name. Case 4. God spoke to Jeremiah as well in a vision. You can find that in Jeremiah 1, 11 and 12. God asked him, What seest thou? He said, I saw the rod of an arbor tree. He said, I will hasten my word to perform it. So when God speaks to you, he wants to hasten his word to perform it. Your duty is to be on guard and be at a lot to make sure the vision is not dead. The most important thing of any vision is that we who are given the vision are the ones to pray, Lord, expand it to me. You can put your hand upon your eyes, Lord, that vision you have shown me, let it come to pass. Put your hand upon your ears. Lord, that vision you have shown me, let me understand it more. Hear exactly what we are saying. Father, as I declare what I have seen, what I have heard, cause it to come to pass. And don't forget, every vision you have will give you profit. You will eat from it. Your children will eat from it. This particular vision, this particular assembly vision, I'm enjoying it. My family is enjoying it because God told me, and I'm eating from the uh, fruit of it. I don't have another job I'm doing, so I don't expect salary from government, company. It's here inside the church. I'm serving God, and it's promoting me. So you also have a place that God is telling you to go. You may not, may not be doing that job, but you're still be working, working for somebody. But even if you are working for somebody, have it in mind that one day you will open your own. He told Jeremiah that what he was going to, what he was going, he was going to hasten it. So God wants us to know that his duty is to hasten it, but our duty is to believe. If you can't believe, God cannot hasten it. He has never changed. He will never change. I tell people, when you don't understand anything, check, recheck, and double check. And that's the rule of life. Check, recheck, and double check so that you don't make any mistake. And once there's an error, you forget God and God forgets you. But if there's no error, you are clear of the vision. God will make it very clear and hasten it through gifts of men and women and angelic intervention to make sure you get the result. So this month, I prophesy what we have seen now, what we have seen before, what we have seen some years ago, pursue it until it comes to reality in Jesus' name. You can do any of the following concerning that vision if it's not clear. Number one, pray about it for clarity. God has shown you the vision. Lord, that vision which you have shown me, when will it start? I was in Kenya when God told me I come to Portacol, January 22nd, during the 21 days fasting. Now, I came to Nigeria in July, was posted to Benin, and in November in Benin, I disengaged. 11 months after I had. Some people it will be longer. Papa, God spoke to him, we pray for 28 months before the church started. Number two, pray in tongues for every confusion in the spirit to clear up. One of the ways God does things for you is as you pray in the spirit, the atmosphere becomes clearer and you know what to do. Number three, read books on vision, times and seasons, and following God's plan for your life. You can get a book on vision from Ken Hagen, or Dick Moore wrote one, times and Following God's plan for your life is not written by Ken Hagen. Go and read them. You know more about future and what God is telling you. The subject of divine direction has many books. You can't miss it. Even if you have missed it before, this month of June, say I will not miss it again. One more time, I will not miss it again. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Number four, fellowship with the Holy Spirit is study and pray 
especially in the Holy Ghost. Jude 20 encourages us to pray in the Holy Ghost. First Corinthians 14, 18. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. He was praying often, he was fasting often, he was watching often. That's the way to know about future. You pray often, you fast often, you watch often. I, I keep saying, praying is good, watching is better. And when you pray and watch and fast, you are very much at a lot. Number five, be constantly in fellowship with the brain, in low voice, in what? Iron, sharpen, iron. So a man sharpening the covenant of his brethren. You can't do it alone. A, a man who knows God will be close to God. My father in law, the was said, if my friends stop following God, I'll stop following him because I want people who can drop the level of God. So if your friend is backsliding, you encourage him, doesn't want to come back, leave him alone. Don't let him push you to the pit. Number six, take time to be alone in the night. Reflect on what God has done for you. Thank him and give you praise and listen to him to hear more. Number seven. Appreciate God for previous encounters of life, of testimonies of joy. And that was exactly what David did. He killed lion, he killed bear. When he saw Goliath, he said, the Lord has loved me from the lion and the bear. We got to receive our sacrifice when he said. He was so boastful in God that God has sent me to deal with heavier animals, so this man cannot be a problem. Even though he was a teenager, he had faith in God. And that's what God wants. Whether you're a teenager, you're an adult and youth, all of us should have faith in God. That what we read in the Bible, he has done before, he can do it again. What we read contemporary time, he do doing another bigger ministry, he can do it our own again in Jesus' name. Number eight, get tapes along the areas of your concern of higher ministries and ministers who have written or printed or preach along that line. Marriage, faith, healing, very many books in the bookstores. Please don't be an adult believer. Readers are leaders, we are told. And leaders who are also thinkers who rule the world because thinkers rule the world. If God is showing something you don't understand, I encourage you, read books along that area, pray in the spirit, find out video men of God, who have preached along that area or have books to show. Number nine, be a praise addict. What does that mean? You don't have to be in the choir. Sing song in your English, sing in dialect, in the midnight, early morning, when you are free, when you are not busy, and make sure you are not lying down in bed, sing it. That, that doesn't work. Stand up, worship God, or the, at least sit down and put your hand on the table where you are not sleeping. Don't lie down and be sleeping. It will not work. Is it business, ministry, career? You want to find books? Go to the bush or Google. You get things to read, and your faith will be strong. Number ten: Avoid bad company. Evil communication corrupts good man. We are talking about Corinthians chapter three, and uh, he that walk out with the wise shall be wise, but he that walk in a company of fools shall be destroyed. You will walk with the wise. I will walk with the wise. That's how to walk home. Because if you have good vision and you have a bad partner, you will spoil it. Abin, uh, uh, Jonadab and Amno were bad friends. Jonadab lured Amno to commit sin. David and, Jol uh, Gola uh, David and uh, Jonathan were good friends. Find those who can push you forward in your relationship. What I say? Find those who can encourage you to move forward. Anyone who tells you you are too zealous for God cannot be your friend. Number 11, insist on getting answers today to questions worrying you instead of procrastinating the tomorrow. Please insist on getting answers. Christ stay with the Jews, doctors of the law, asking them and answering them. So what you don't do, you can ask. Asking, asking questions, answering questions, people give answers is part of learning. What you don't know and you have been trying to read for years, one question you ask, can deliver you. He said, Bishop, you have been sharing only for Old Testament. Let's go to New Testament and see what it says. In Matthew 3, 16 and 17, Jesus was being baptized by John the Baptist. As Jesus was lowered inside the water, a voice spoke from heaven. 
The Holy Ghost descended upon the body of Jesus Christ, and a voice spoke from heaven. This is my beloved Son, in whom I was pleased. He saw the heavens open, repeated in Luke 3, 21-22. As Christ was being baptized, the heavens opened. The voice of God spoke, and the Holy Ghost descended on him, and Jesus Christ was there. So the Father, the Son, the Spirit were there. So as to see vision, don't see flesh and blood to help you succeed. You can take counsel from them, but at the end, pray to God and ask the Spirit how to go about it. No man, the Holy Spirit, they can counsel you, and men can also counsel you wrong. And when they don't understand the vision, they may try to discourage you. My father-in-law was discouraged by somebody, a man of God that he wasn't called, but he told the partner he went to the wife now. Are you, do you believe the man of God will believe you? The woman said, I believe you. And now, later the man said, I was joking. Please, don't let anybody joke with your life. What about John the Apostle? John the Eyes of Patmos. Revelation 1, 10, 11. He said, I was in the spirit in the Lord's day. So he saw something. And I heard a voice and I saw something. Please, this is the end time. God is moving his people. Let's find what is we are hearing. Let's check what we are seeing before we declare it. If you don't understand it, you don't see it well, you won't know how to pray. Calculate your prayers by understanding what you want to pray and knowing what is needful for you or the hour. Jesus saw the heavens open. Any one of us can see the heavens open. I prophesy for all my listeners this evening, may you see the heavens open as you sleep, as you watch at what God is telling you in Jesus' name. God is speaking to people today. People are still seeing visions and you can see your own. God is not late. He has shown people vision before. He can still show you. Whether you see vision in the night, you close your eyes, you see vision, or you were just sitting at home in the afternoon and you saw vision, please don't discard the vision. Don't stay in the cooler. Don't throw away the vision. What do you, I say you do? Write the vision. Keep it somewhere and be revising and be checking what God is saying. It will not be long. God will tell you how to move in that area. So you hunger for that vision to fulfill by praying, by fasting, and by watching. Pray more, fast more, and you see more. Be an ardent student of the Holy Spirit. One prayer I pray with the Holy Spirit, I want to be a permanent student in your class. If you graduate in the class of the Holy Spirit, who will teach you? Holy Spirit, I, all my life, I want to uh, be a student. If you graduate, where will you go? Holy Spirit, I want to be a student. So be an ardent student of the Word of God. I come to the Holy Spirit that I want to be a permanent student in your class. So that when you teach me, I will learn. But if you graduate from that school, nobody can. God has put us to teach us. If we don't align to teach us, <laughs> we're in trouble. God's Son will manifest in your life through the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. There was hunger in Samaria, and four lepers went out to the enemy's camp, and they saw plenty of food. They said, Who die here? Oh, let's go and call our people. So they saw something that was good. And they came to the port of the town, and God helped them. And it was a nice time, packing food. And by the next day, by what Elijah provided, food was sold at the gate of Samaria at the price Elijah mentioned when they were going to show for it at all. God allowed the vision and the prophecy of the man of God to come to pass. What of Daniel? This is what I this is Daniel. Daniel saw a vision like Paul as he was going. The light shone like Paul, and he bowed himself. And all those who were with him did not hear the voice. They saw the lightning, and Daniel got the vision, and he saw angels and come down. Benjamin came down and helped him out of that battle because all the angels that were saying, Satan will lead on the road. But Satan, you know, will lead He came and told Daniel, Your prayers answered. Paul, Apostle Paul, was going to Damascus and God showed him a vision and light showed from heaven. Whoever has never seen a vision in his life that is pursuing, and you're just living like that, go to work and come back, it's not enough. I prophesy today, see a new vision of what God is telling you in Jesus' name. Remember, whatever God shows you today will remain a daydream except you are ready to act on it. Action. It's a proof of faith. 
Faith is a proof that you, are, you believe in that dream and you have to make it work from the past. Your feet has to move as vehicles to possess that vision. If I didn't write winners, I want to leave, I'll be winners now. I wrote, it was approved, I was praying for, and I left. Now I'm here. I'm not regretting because I saw the vision. Nobody saw it for me. Don't let people prophesy on your head. Brother, sister, I saw a prophet. He said, you tell you, no. Anything you don't understand, don't follow it. Because if it's not the will of God, it's a try. And if it's not in the Bible, it's a try. Don't go for it. You must be able to declare that counsel of God through prayer, through prophetic utterance, through telling your friends what you have seen, and tell them, God has shown you, and your desire will come to pass because you are trusting God. Don't delay that vision. It is not a mystery that God has shown you or told you of things. That encounter is for a lifetime. Keep it, dream over it, pray over it, and give it utmost attention. Times and seasons are for a purpose. This is the first day of the month. If you have anointing oil, please get it up and let's pray for this new month. Place that oil on your fingertip and get set to pray. This oil is blessed and sanctified in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Play upon your forehead. This month of June shall be your month of sunshine. Even though it's the month of healing, as you heal people, pray for them. The healing will occur. You will shine the light, and your light will arise. You will shine as the brightness of the star. No devil, no evil shall come near your dwelling. I prophesy with this oil upon your forehead. This month of June, nothing dies in your hand. This month of June, nothing fails in your hand. As the oil touch your forehead, its peace come not nigh. No man, no woman, no evil shall come near your dwelling in Jesus' name. This month of June, nothing dies in your life, nothing dies in your family, nothing dies in your environment. Where you work, where you do business, this sixth month, see what you have not seen before. May your light shine. Be a healer. Be a minister of health. You, will, you won't be the one to be sick, but you'll be the one that when they come, you are the one to give the answers. I bless this oil. Let your hand touch the curtain. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, as the oil is blessed, I decree whatever you use it, give your parents, relations, loved ones to use some of your children in boarding schools to send to them. As it's working in peace centers, it will work in their life. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Get your hands set up as I'm doing and get set for prayers. In the name of Jesus, I declare this phone blessed. Throughout this month of June, a lot upon a lot will hit you on a daily basis. Not just on a daily basis, heavier a lot than you have ever seen between now and the first five months. And also pray, as the money comes your way, you pay your tithe, give offering, take care of your children, do your work, and take care of your family. No one will be a beggar. Don't let God bless you and you squander it because it will not work. I prophesy, every contract you have been waiting for, business contract that will take you outside the country, may it come this is in Jesus' name. Whatever business you have been trying to do, it has not materialized. I prophesy this month of June, it shall come to pass in Jesus' name. Now lift your two hands above your head as I close this service. In the name of Jesus, Father, for this one who have come in the morning and come in the evening, whatever they have desired in this month of June, do it for them early according to Psalm 90 verse 14 in Jesus' name. Any encounter like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, they want to see let them see this month in Jesus' name. Whatever you have told them that has not started, let it start this month. Whatever has started, they need things to accomplish it. Give them favor, money, and resources to complete it. I decree and declare, this month, number six, shall be your best month so far in Jesus' name. And because the month of healing the sick, you are the one to heal others. Others will not come and tell you sorry in Jesus' name. I prophesy from now to the end of the month, only good news we shall share. There shall be no loss, shall work 100%. I believe it, you believe it, and it shall come to pass. Peace in Jesus' name.